If this movie came out today, it would get the same smoke that Cuties did. Okay, it's the fact that a grown man thought it was okay to put kids in blackface. That's the thing for me. Sounds like a cute movie, doesn't it? No, it's not cute at all. We used to own me and I am ashamed. Who, what went through your brain when you thought it was okay to make this, sir? What is it about black girls that y'all hate so bad, okay? What is it? I would love to know. Please answer my question. Hey y'all, it's Hariana and I'm back with another video. Happy New Year, okay? I have to go ahead and say that. It's a brand new year, fresh start. We're still in this, but you know what? We're just gonna have to make the most of it at this point because I'm tired, I'm tired. Hello, my name is Hariana. I am the captain and you are not my first mate. You are on my pirate ship. You do as I say, you do as I do, okay? And if you have a problem with that, you can go walk the plank over there, okay? Hello, my name is Hariana and I like to make content based off nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I like to find within those spaces. Today's video actually was not going to be posted until the coming Friday, but this has been disturbing me, like, living in my head rent free and i know i'm not gonna feel better physically mentally and emotionally until i get this video out so it's gonna be the new video of the year i did not want to start new year off with this video but i'm i'm sorry um my avatar video is gonna have to wait my julian the phantoms video is gonna have to wait my euphoria video is gonna have to come late i'm yes i'm talking about euphoria it's not what y'all think though yeah um Ariana Hook is disturbed, but you know, before we gotta, um, Ariana Hook has to do her self-promotion, because remember, I'm the captain, and I can do what I want on my pirate ship. Also, if my energy is a bit off in this video, it's because this has been, like, like I said, disturbing me. It's been really disturbing me. Randomly remembered this movie, revisited it, found out some things about it that really disturbed me, we watched it and I am angry. I'm just ballistic. I am very angry. But you know, I've got to do my self-promotion first before I can go any further on this subject. Um, I have a website. I am starting my own shop up. Many of you guys have been asking me about merchandise and things like that. So I am starting my own little accessory line. It's not ready to be launched yet. But I feel extremely confident about it. Please go to harryanahook.com and subscribe to our mailing list. And please hit follow Harry on Hook on Instagram. You guys should follow my main Instagram too at Nicole with three E's on JJ. But yes, I will have Harry on Hook's Instagram down below. Please go subscribe to our mailing list so you'll be there when we launch. And yes, I have good things coming for that. Next thing we got to get into is subscribe to my Patreon. Yeah, you get exclusive behind the scenes video. You sub to my Patreon. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And here on the Patreon, you get access to my Discord. You get early access to all my videos and a lot of other good perks that are coming in the future. So yeah, please support me on Patreon. If you can, I understand times are tough and things like that. But that's just only if you can. It's just like giving me a little tip. Just giving me a little tip. And last but not least, we have to support The Progenies. The Progenies is a web series that I'm currently in the process of making with a few other people. It is based off the Descendants characters from Disney's Descendants. And we want to portray these people in a better light because these are such great characters and they deserve much better stories. So please go support The Progenies. Please follow us on Instagram and please watch our pilot down below. Now, into the mess of what I am about to talk about because it is a lot to unravel here. Like, let's just go ahead and look at the outline on my lap. Also, by the way, requests are closed and only open to Patreon from this point on, so yeah. Today, we are going to talk about a very offensive movie that many people don't even know exists. Mainly because you have not been able to watch this movie since about 2013 after Netflix got rid of it. And you can watch it now um, since like 2018 because the director posted it on his own YouTube channel. So many people have forgotten about this movie and I feel like if Netflix just kept it up on there, this movie would get dragged to filth that it should. And I have not seen anyone drag it yet. So, ooh. 
Today we are going to be talking about a movie named Spork. Spork is a coming of age film that was released in 2011. Directed by J.V. Gumman Jr. The movie is about a girl who is nicknamed Spork because she is intersex. Now throughout the movie Spork is by really just coming of age of who she is as a person. She's coming of age um, like just coming out of her shell really. She stands up to her bully. She has her first kiss, her first love. She's opening up with her parents, her um, friends too. And she learns to dance. Sounds like a cute movie, doesn't it? it's not cute at all if you're someone like me who grew up watching like disney channel all the time you will be able to recognize a few of the cast members um the most recognizable one would have to be sydney park who played um sydney on that's a raven she was so adorable on there and she's been on instant mom and she was on the most recent pretty little liar spinoff called the perfectionist and she also used to be like really really big on alternate tv that's how a lot of people found out about her they didn't know that she was an actor they just knew her from being one of the girls on Austin. This TV. As I have gotten older, I just feel more secure about who I am and where I've come from. I'm very open on, on social media and what I put out about like my beliefs and my life. It's a highlight reel, just like everyone else's. Sometimes I take Instagram breaks, just not comparing, not on social media, and I have to do it for my job. Then we have Juana Gregory, who was on Lab Rats and Crash and Bernstein on Disney XD. I also remember Juana a lot because she was friends with Paris Burrell. I don't know if they're friends anymore. Like I said, I don't keep up with Paris no more. But yeah, I remember I used to see her with her a lot. And Rachel G. Fox, who played Amber Tate in that one episode of the freaking, um, iCarly? Yeah, the Dingo Channel episode. Yeah, that's where she came from. It sounds like a cute movie. It sounds like it would be so, so cute. But no, a big N-O. This movie is just no. Like, what? What went through your brain when you thought it was okay to make this, sir? And also, by the way, please don't send any hate to the cast members in this movie. They were children, okay? They were children, okay? Please don't send any hate to them. I'm just talking about the source material. Please don't hate nobody, okay? Please don't. This movie is actually really disturbing. I don't understand why this movie owned me when I was in middle school. Then again, I watched a lot of weird things when I was in middle school. I've seen a lot of weird stuff when I was that young. Probably because I thought it was like cool and edgy if I liked this movie because I saw all the cool people like this movie and everybody thought it was cute and funny. So I just kind of hopped on the bandwagon. Like this movie used to own me and I am ashamed. If you would like to view Spork on your own, I have made a list of a lot of things in this movie that are very offensive to people and just flat out disturbing. So I'm going to read the list like right here on my phone. You guys see my tough phone case? We're going to read it right here. Transphobia, homophobia, racism, misogynoir, poverty, middle schoolers cussing, middle schoolers talking about sex, a very awkward kissing scene. That's just disturbing. Uh, that's just one of the disturbing aspects middle schoolers twerking and dancing provocatively a dead taxidermy dog that is throughout the movie the entire time blackface glamorizing teen pregnancy there are numerous issues within this movie okay there are just way too many issues that i can just count on my 10 fingers okay probably on my 10 toes too this movie is just extremely disturbing to look like and extremely offensive and I am a straight black woman so I don't want to feel as if I am speaking over the other communities that this movie has offended so I will just be speaking about how it offended me as a black woman and I will only be speaking about the black girls but I just want to let y'all know that I see y'all I am here for y'all okay but like I said I don't want to feel like I'm speaking over you guys because I feel like it's not really my place to speak. It's just my place to listen and observe and learn. So yeah, we're just gonna be talking about the black girls and it's so many issues with them, okay? 
before I even begin, I don't even want nobody in my comment section trying to say that the reason I didn't like the movie is because I didn't get it. Like, no, the movie is extremely offensive. I'm just so tired of people just acting as if this film is just picture perfect when it's extremely hurtful and harmful. I don't want nobody trying to say you just don't get it. No, I got it. I saw through it and I was still hurt. If this movie came out today, it would get the same smoke that Cuties did. Like literally so, so many similarities between this and Cuties. I didn't watch Cuties because I didn't have the time. I didn't want to deal with that. I, I didn't, I didn't, no, uh-uh. I didn't, I didn't want to watch the movie. But from what everybody was talking about, the context of the film, I was like, I remember seeing that in Spork. Oh no. It's also very disturbing in this film, like, with all the black girls, is that the white, it's just something that I just noticed in real life with white people in general, is that when it comes to black people, a lot, like, white people will either be very disturbed and annoyed by them, or they'll also be extremely fascinated by them. Like, I can give an example of this when I went to Six Flags one time when I was in middle school, and like I said, around the time when I saw this movie, and by the way, I was the same age as these girls in this movie, too. Um... Yeah, me and my friends were at Six Flags and we were just in a group just dancing and then some white people were irritated with us and some white people were like fascinated by us and kept telling us to go, go, go. And we were kind of really disturbed by both of those. So yeah, we don't like when you guys do that. It's really harmful. Like, I just thought this movie was, like, it, it felt, like, very, like I said, it's, like, very heavy on the urban hip-hop culture in the movie and things like that. So, I didn't think nothing of it. I still found it a bit odd, and now I finally figured out why it was odd. Because I found out this movie was both written and directed by a white man. Yeah. So that's when the table flipped when I realized that, okay? I thought it was just a weird movie made by like a black person or something. I found out a white man made this. I was just like, is this what we are? Is this what we really doing? Is this what we really doing? Like I said, I know this movie is supposed to be like a dark comedy satire, but it really just rubs me the wrong way. And I'm really revisiting it with a really, really bad attitude. And like I said, this movie features children and they're written this way it's like middle school children too it, it's weird it's getting weird when i was a kid i thought this movie was funny like i can relate to the black girl in, in this movie like i can relate like i'd be like yes i used to twerk in gym class and i used to put like a lot of hair grease in my hair thinking that it looked good and it was cute um, but like I said, now that I acknowledge that a white man made this movie, I feel like I'm being made fun of. I feel like I'm being picked at. I feel like I'm the butt of the jokes. I feel like the scum between somebody's toes right now. I feel like that, I feel like I'm getting pointed the finger at. I felt very offended with this film. It hurts. It really hurts, okay? I revisited this movie a few nights ago and I'm still really, really extremely disturbed by that that's why i'm just like very very out of it my question for y'all is this why don't y'all like to see black girls as human beings and children instead of just adults or objects just please explain that to me what is it about black girls that y'all hate so bad okay what is it I would love to know. Please answer my question. And before I go any further, guess I am aware both the white girls and the black girls in this movie are both very over-sexualized. With the white girls, it's portrayed more as soft and cutesy. And with the black girls, it's more aggressive and in your face. Like there's literally an entire scene where the white girls dressed up as the black girls in blackface and made fun of them right there and the teachers were standing there looking at it like should we do something should we not and then they didn't so I was just like okay it's the fact that a grown man thought it was okay to put kids in blackface that's the thing for me that's the thing for me blackface will never be funny in any kind of context that y'all try to play it in okay I need y'all to go look up what minstrelsy is Go look up what minstrelsy is, okay? Minstrel shows were originally created to make fun of black people, okay? It's never been 
funny. Anytime y'all try to recreate blackface as something powerful or whatever, it's never funny. It's never okay. It's extremely disturbing. And the fact that you thought it was okay to put children in blackface blows my mind. And then not only when they were making fun of the black girls, they were also being extremely transphobic, which really pissed me off. Like, y'all, this movie is atrocious. That's, like, the best way to describe it. It's a dumpster fire. Like, what? How is this movie supposed to be a comedy? Like, I wasn't laughing at all at any of the context that was in it. I wasn't giggling. I wasn't snickering. I was just sitting there getting angry and angry and angry and angrier. And when I watched this movie when I was a child, I thought it was funny because everybody else thought it was funny. And, it's, and I felt like I was being told not to take it as seriously and just laugh along with it. But no, like, there's literally nothing funny about this. I wasn't sniggering. I wasn't giggling. I was just getting more pissed off as I continue my viewing. Like, literally, every black girl in this movie is extremely mean. Like, she has a really, really not nasty attitude. And they all speak in very, very heavy slang. Very, very heavy A-E-V-E. Heavy bonics, like... Not all black girls talk like that, sir. Like, it's just so obvious that a white man wrote this. It, hmm. Like, it's this one scene that I just really freaking hate. I didn't like it when I was younger. I thought it was funny when I was younger because, like, uh, I had, like, a lot of issues going on, okay, with me younger, like, being self-hatred and all that. But I revisited this scene I hate it. Like, oh, I said that word so many times as I watched this video. But there's a scene where Tootsie Roll, the little girl that Sydney Park plays, she gets up and she starts dancing. So she gets up, starts dancing, and she starts whipping her hair back and forth. She starts slinging her hair around. And there's always... Oh, God, I hate this. She was whipping her hair around so much that the grease in her hair was like flying everywhere and it was getting on people and it was getting everywhere and it got on the floor and she slipped and broke her leg. And you want to know why that's offensive? This is why it's offensive. People love to make fun of black girls for having what they say greasy hair. When really the reason our hair has so much product in it is because if it does not, if our hair is dry, like you can just touch my hair right now and there'll still be like a little product, a little oil that comes out on it. If you touch our hair, yes, there's going to be something on it because if our hair is dry, it will break off. Black hair is very delicate and it is also very fragile and we have to do so much to take care of it. That's why a lot of us wear a lot of braids and weaves and things like that. It's extremely offensive when people try to make fun of the things that black women have to do to keep up the maintenance on their hair. And that's exactly what this film did. Like, I'm sorry, Sydney Park is an extremely talented girl. Like, I know I follow her. I think she's beautiful. I've been a fan for, like, ever. But, like, I... Oh, Jesus, baby. Baby, she did so good in this role, too. Like, that's the weird thing about this movie is that it was... The acting was good. The kids were talented. But this was not it. This was not it whatsoever. I'm sorry. I'm just, like, I'm not laughing. I'm just angry, okay? This is atrocious like I said and you guys probably wonder why I made this video like I made this video because like like I said I'm not trying to sound like a hater or anything but I made this video because I have yet to see anyone say the elephant in the room that pertains to this movie about it being extremely offensive every time i go and look at reviews for it and whatever i look at when people revisit it and see what they had to say i only just see positive things talking about it's a quirky out of it out of out of this world movie it's extremely funny you just have to be that kind of person to get it it's very strange but it works it's this and that and the third like i only been seeing praise for this film and i don't agree with it whatsoever this movie is extremely hurtful this movie is bad for the culture it's very very bad for the culture like so many people don't even know this movie exists like i feel like a lot of times because of the way time is set up, 
what the world is now like we're a lot more progressive now when it comes to the media that we make and engage in than we were back in 2011 2012 2013 like that era is just weird when it comes to content like go look at youtube and style what they got away with this movie looks like the things like the creepy things that shane dawson used to make this is what spork is like this movie is actually really really freaking disturbing like the people i feel like okay I feel, I strongly believe that if this movie came out nowadays, it would have gotten so much smoke that it deserved. Because this movie ain't it. Like, there are movies out here by y'all little favorite directors, y'all favorite writers and whatever that are extremely offensive and extremely wrong, but you'll never know about them because one day slipping things under the rug, you can barely find them anywhere to watch, and if you do, you gotta pay for it. These people know what they're doing, Okay. These people know what they're doing, okay? They just took it and just swept it under the rug and tried to pretend like it never happened and moved on with their life. And if they see people just praised it in the past for the things that were in it, they just gonna run with it and be like, well, back then they said it was good. Well, I'm sorry, boo. That don't fly now. That don't fly now. That's why we like to drag 16 candles to filth nowadays because that movie has issues. So many issues. And I'm so glad that we are finally talking about the issues that surround that film, okay? Like, people who've seen this movie try to play it off as edgy when it is not. And that is the main reason why I really can't get into the satire genre, like, the satire comedy genre, or just this kind of, like, offensive sense of humor. That's the main reason why I can't really get into it, because people always try to play off ignorance as if it's funny. And I'm not that kind of person. I don't find ignorance funny. You think picking at people for things that cannot control or just messing with them about various stereotypes and things like that, Y'all sense of humor is not for me. You can't hang with me, boo. You can't sit with me. And that's exactly what this movie did. It tried to play off ignorance as if it were a joke. And to know that a white man did this, he thought it was okay to write black girls in this context and portray them in this kind of way really does hurt me. And the most disturbing thing about this movie is that I saw like I was going through like this man's stuff and he was talking about how proud he was of this movie and how it brought his vision to life and things like that. And I was just like, why? Why? You really sat there and thought that this was like Oscar worthy material? You really thought you was doing something with this film? No, this movie is hurtful. This movie is extremely hurtful. You don't see, you no. How was this your vision? I thought it was really, really freaking weird. But that concludes this little rant. I am so sorry that we're starting the video off with this, okay? My goal for this year was to talk about more positive things, things that make me happy, and talk more about cartoons. And no, we've fallen back into the 2020 rabbit hole that I had got myself in. And I was like, no, I want to be happier this year. I want to make more content about things that make me who I am. And yeah. And that's part of the reason why we're doing Harry by Harry on a Hook. That is the name of my fashion accessory. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, please go support that if you can. Please go follow me on all my socials. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Tumblr, and follow me on Twitter. And yeah, I have concluded this rant. I am just so, like, overwhelmed right now. I, I legit cried about this earlier today because I felt so angry with the fact that, like, someone got away with doing this. So I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here because I'm just really kind of on edge. I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And yes, have a good night.